Consciousness or your experience of reality could just be an hallucination created by your brain. At least, this is the hypothesis that the author of the book Being You, Anil Seth, proposes. He says that what you see, for example, your experience of this image is not the objective way that this image is in reality. In fact, it's just a control hallucination created by your brain. Now, this hypothesis is in direct competition with a more typical view of perception that is called the bottom of view. Let me explain. So the bottom of view of perception usually goes like this. So you have your, at the very bottom, your raw data that is being picked up by your senses. And then your senses, what it will do is just send that information to different systems in your brain so that your brain can process it and combine it into a meaningful picture of the world. For example, if you have an apple, uh, you might start by seeing the color red of the apple, then the shape, then the edges, and finally your brain will recognize that what you're seeing right now is an apple. But the control hallucination hypothesis says that your perception of reality is not created by a bottom-up uh, process. Instead, it is created by a top-down process where your brain will use its prior knowledge and expectations to make predictions. And after that, it will use the raw data to minimize the amount of errors in its predictions. Now, although it is using raw data to make its predictions, ultimately what you're experiencing as a human being is not the raw data itself, it is instead the predictions or the guesses that your brain makes. But the problem with this hypothesis is, is that what you experience as being reality does feel real. For example, this remote does feel real and it does feel like I'm really seeing the remote as it is and not as my brain predicts it. But the author's response to this is just like, for example, a flat plane and a very, very, very big globe would both look flat from very up close. It's the same thing with the bottom up and the top down approach. So in this video, we will zoom out and I'll give you the four best evidence in favor of this control hallucination hypothesis. So the first evidence that we have is called the color and light constancy. And that's when your brain will see the same shade and the same color in different environments. For instance, here's a depiction of color constancy where you have a red rectangle and even in different light conditions, for example, white light, yellow light, and blue light, the brain will perceive the red rectangle rectangle as being red all the time. This evolutionarily makes a lot of sense because if I want to track an object, it's much easier to track it if it doesn't change color when it changes environment. So let me give you some examples and let's start with light constancy. So this is one of the most famous example that's called Adelson's Checker and it was made in 1995. So here, as you can see, there's a dark gray square with the letter A and under it, there's a light gray square with the letter B, but there's a cylinder that is casting a shadow on it. Now, the reason why this is an optical illusion is because both squares, the A and B squares, are both the same color. Now, in the next few minutes, I'll show you even more examples of optical illusions. And if at any time you don't believe me and you think I'm lying about, for example, the A square and the B square being the same color, you can always pause the video and test it out for yourself by taking a screenshot and then putting it in your favorite photo editing software, for example, Paint or Photoshop, and then color picking both squares. And you'll see they are, they are the exact same color. So the reason why this illusion works is because of the context. And so your brain, when seeing something in shadow, it probably has a rule where it says that when you see something in shadow, that probably means that the thing that is in shadow is of a lighter color. And so you should correct for it. And so that's what the brain does. And if we remove the context by putting gray bars, as you can see now, the both squares look exactly the same color. And this is evidence of the control hallucination hypothesis because the light waves coming from the A and B squares are exactly the same. The only thing that differs between the two squares is the prediction that is made in your brain. So what you perceive is not reality itself, it's the prediction. Now let's move on to the opposite of this optical illusion with this one that is made by Akiyoshi Kitaoka that is called Asashi. So here, as you can see in the middle, it looks very bright 
and you have petals that have kind of a gradient on them. Now the optical illusion here is that the shade of white on the outside and the shade of white in the middle are both the exact same. Now the reason why this is happening is probably because your brain sees the gradient on those petals going from darker, uh, a darker shade to a lighter shade and then concluding that the reason why this is happening is probably because in the middle there's a source of light because in nature this is what it does. Now the brain evolved in nature and not in an environment where everyone have access to photo editing software and that's probably why it was useful to make that prediction. And your brain believes in that prediction so much that if you look at it, your pupils will constrict. So now let's move on to examples of the color constancy effect. Here, as you can see, there are spheres of different colors. There are green spheres, orange spheres, and blue purplish spheres and the illusion here is that they are all the same color again if you want to test it just take a screenshot and you'll see they are all the same color but you probably won't have to do it because i have the image without the lines over them now if we layer that as you can see it's kind of trippy because it feels like there's colors being added or it feels like it's changing colors but it's still the same sphere uh there's no color change and here's a more a simpler version of this um, uh, optical illusion where again all the circles are the same color and here's my favorite one where you have spirals of colors and so for this one the blue and the green swirl are the exact same color and so the color constancy effect is probably why some people saw the dress as being white and gold just like myself and others saw the dress as being blue and black now in reality the dress is blue and black but because of the environment that the picture was taken in and the picture being overexposed this probably caused the the illusion to happen where because there was colder light coming from above and warmer light coming from the side for some people like myself it caused our brain to just start interpreting those signals and predicting that what it the, the true color of that dress was actually white and gold. Now, what the dress showed is that the way we perceive the world will differ from person to person. And the reason why we don't really notice it in our day-to-day -day life is because the difference is very, very slight. And to tease it apart, that difference, we need very, very specific conditions like the one found in the picture of the dress. The second evidence is one in favor of the prediction error minimization component of the control hallucination hypothesis. If you remember earlier, what I said is that the brain will take raw data and use it to reduce the amount of errors it makes in its predictions. So to prove that it's actually doing that, here is an image of uh, white and black blobs that doesn't really look like anything. But then if I give you more information so that your brain can update its predictions, you will see something different. So here's a picture of a woman kissing a horse. And now if you go back now, you will see the woman kissing a horse uh, instead of the random black and white blobs that you saw earlier. So the image didn't change at all. All that changed is your brain's prediction about the image. So this effect not only can be replicated with images, it can also be replicated with sounds. So in a moment, you will hear a bunch of silly whistles. So let's hear again. Now that didn't sound like anything. And that's because it's called a sine wave speech. So it's speech that I don't know exactly what they do, but it's basically they simplify the uh, audio so that it sounds like this. Uh, you can look it up. I don't exactly understand how it works. Now, if I make you hear the speech that is unedited. The man read the newspaper at lunchtime. Let's hear again. The man read the newspaper at lunchtime. And then I make you re-hear the same silly whistles. So as you can see now that uh, audio is intelligible. So let's hear again. So this effect is probably why we can pretty much understand any accents if we're exposed long enough to it. So for example, here's a clip from the movie Hot Fuzz in 2007. <laughs> Right. What did he say? He said, as you say, I don't know. He only chopped him down because he couldn't see the view no more. What's he moaned though? What did he say? He said, an edge is an edge. He only chopped it down because it's bought his view. What's Reaper moaning about? Right. Look, 
So if you replay that clip again and again, you will be able to understand what the first person and the second person said. And that's because now your brain has updated its predictions about what is being said. So the third evidence in favor of the control hallucination hypothesis is about your perception of change. Now, in the book, the author says that for you to perceive change, change in the outside world or change in the raw data that your senses pick up is neither necessary or sufficient. So let me show you some examples. So the first one is how change itself is not necessary for you to perceive change. So this is called the rotating snakes, again, made by Akiyoshi Kitaoka. And this is not a gift. This is just an image, but it tricks your brain into perceiving motion. Now, the second one is the opposite, where change is not sufficient for you to perceive change. So in a few seconds, you will see a room and see if you can spot the items in the room that are a little bit out of place. You've probably noticed that some objects have changed or moved, but my guess is that you didn't notice that a majority of the objects changed or moved. So here is the first image right here, as you can see. And now let me show you the second one, the before, after, before, after. As you can see, you've probably not noticed the extent at which the, the room changed before and after. And that's because that's called change blindness to so some people on youtube especially magicians will take advantage of the change blindness effect by slowly changing the color of their shirt and then at the end they will tell you did you notice that my shirt turned from green to red or green to blue usually so what this shows is that change itself is neither necessary nor sufficient for you to perceive change instead what is necessary is for your brain to update its predictions now the last evidence that we'll see in favor of the control hallucination hypothesis is about the perception of time your subjective experience of time so the author in the book describes an experiment that he did to test people's perception of time and his hypothesis going into this was that people's perception of time is not due to any internal clock that we have inside our head that is counting the seconds the minutes or the hours instead it is due to your brain's best guess about how much time had passed based on certain information so the way he tested this was by showing people videos of the same length but with different contexts. So some were calmer, for example, cows grazing, and others were much busier, for example, in New York City street. And what he noticed is that you could predict the amount of time that subjects felt had subjectively passed only by looking at the amount of activity in the uh, vision system. So when you feel like time passes slower or faster, one of the reason, one of the component that makes you feel that way is probably due to your brain using uh, vision system activity in order to predict how much time you should feel. Now, obviously, we will need more evidence and more research in order to know whether the control hallucination hypothesis is a true or approximately true description of reality. But I think it explains pretty well everything that we've seen in this video, every single evidence and every single effect that is happening in your brain. So if there's any other hypothesis that wants to compete against this one, it'll need to explain better than the control hallucination hypothesis, the evidence that we've seen so far. And if it happens to be true, if the control hallucination hypothesis gains momentum and is proven to be approximately true, then that will better help us understand why the hell we are conscious.